What's up guys, today I'm gonna to be testing out some brand new makeup. We're having a snow day here in Connecticut and we're just stuck inside. So it's really, really coming down out there. My son is home from school today. Not sure if he's gonna have school tomorrow yet either. I guess it depends on when it stops and how fast they can clean all of this up, but they're saying about six to 10 inches. So it's gonna be a pretty significant snowfall. And he is currently downstairs making out Valentine's for his class tomorrow. So I figured it'd just be a good time to sneak upstairs and put on some makeup and try some new things. I'm not going anywhere today, so if it comes out looking terrible, who cares, right? Sometimes it's just fun to sit down and play with new stuff. And I have some things that I purchased, also a couple things I got in PR. So if that sounds good to you guys, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Okay, so the first product that I wanted to talk about is from LA Girl. This is called the Let's Chill Hydrating Primer Stick. I got this at Ulta, and this is just basically supposed to give your skin extra hydration. I don't think it's supposed to smooth pores or do anything like that. It says that it has glycerin to moisturize and soften your skin. Skin, and it also has antioxidants and it's supposed to hydrate your skin instantly with an invisible non-sticky gel that plumps and preps the skin. So I figured because I'm gonna be trying a new foundation today, it's always good to just have as much hydration as you possibly can. Those of us with dry skin, I mean, you know a foundation is always gonna look better when your skin is properly moisturized. I mean, mine is, I already did my full skincare routine. My skin is feeling very dewy, but I really wanted to try this out it looks super cool so let's just go ahead and slick it on Ooh, it does feel really cold and i didn't have it in the fridge or anything this feels really nice it feels so nice and soothing and it does have a little bit of like a tackiness to it so it might be good for just kind of helping your makeup to grip to your skin a little bit better i'm definitely seeing more of a trend towards stick primers wet n wild just came out with a couple that i tested in a recent video one of which i thought was amazing it was really really poor smoothing so i was impressed with that but yeah i don't feel like this is doing anything for my pores it really does just add hydration to the skin it gave me a little bit of like a dewy glow and it feels really nice going on as well so nothing super earth shattering but I think in the winter time those of us with dry skin can always use a little hydration boost so next for foundation I couldn't wait to try this one it's from about face and it's called the performer skin focused foundation and I was really excited to try this one it has a huge shade range so of course I'm on the Ulta website trying to figure out what my shade is going to be I got this home and it looks way too dark and I'm really disappointed because I thought I was getting the right shade I looked at the different models on the website and this is light medium one cool and I felt like this girl really looked like my skin tone I do have a cool undertone I'm normally not a light medium usually I choose light but when I saw light cool I thought it kind of looked a little bit too light and I always worry about my foundations being too light because in that case, it usually exaggerates all the texture on my skin and it can look dry. I don't know what it is, but lighter foundations always seem to kind of show all of the imperfections a lot more. So it didn't look like this one was gonna be this dark. But anyway, let me just quickly tell you about the formula. It says that it's coverage meets skincare in the skin optimizing foundation formula with powerful ingredients like blue agave, wintergreen, and chlorella. Known to help hydrate, balance, and smooth the skin, it's supposed to be buildable, breathable, medium coverage with a long wear second skin finish. So I love the packaging. I think it's beautiful. It's a really nice sleek bottle with this chrome cap, and I'm not crazy about the doe foot applicator. It kind of reminds me of the Neutrogena Hydro Boost skin tint, which I just showed in my last video, and I love that formula, but I also am not a fan of the doe foot applicator um, but I don't put it directly on my face anyway I just put it on the back of my hand and yeah this foundation is not only too deep for me but it is so peachy I'm noticing this really huge trend these days of brands that are making cool undertones look peachy instead of pink and I don't get that because to me peachy means warm like think of a peachy toned blush it's gonna make your cheeks look really warm as opposed to a cool more purpley pink leaning type of blush so I don't know what's going on but this just looks oompa loompa orange to me and I really don't want to put it on like this so I just ran to grab my LA girl blue color corrector this is a mixer that you can put into foundation and it'll help to turn the color 
color a little bit cooler. And because I'm probably only gonna need a tiny little drop, I don't think that this is gonna change the integrity of this formula. It's just gonna be the ever so slightest amount. I'm really just gonna put a little dot like that. And that should be enough, hopefully. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this together. On the back of my hand, I really just wanna tone down that orangey color because I really just don't think that's gonna work for me. Okay, so here's here it is with the mixer. You can kind of see the old color around the edges, that really orangey tone. And then in the middle there, I have something much more neutral. So what I'm gonna do is apply this with a sponge on this side of my face, and then I'll do a brush over here and we'll see if there's an application difference. But so far, just mixing this on the back of my hand, the foundation feels really thin, really lightweight. And with the sponge, it is sinking right into my skin immediately. It's not the type of formula that sits on top of your skin at all. And one really good thing about foundations that do that is usually they're easy to build upon themselves. The ones that sit on top of your skin kind of move around if you try to add another layer. So I think this one is really gonna be good for building up, but at the same time, the ones that sink deep into your skin can sometimes enhance the lines and the texture and all of that. So it'll be interesting to see how this one works out. But so far, I feel like it has kind of a light to medium coverage. I just did this half of my face. I'm just gonna put a little bit more on the back of my hand and mix it for the other side. Okay, so for the brush side over here, I'm using the brush from my Jen Phelps collection with Doll 10. And I do feel like this is giving a little bit more coverage over here. I think especially if you're using a denser brush like this, it's gonna give you more coverage than a sponge will. But if I'm being honest, I'm not sure that I'm loving the way that this is looking on this side of my face. I think with the brush, it looks a little bit more makeup-y and a little bit heavier. So let me just quickly show you what I'm talking about. So over here, I feel like I see the fine lines in my forehead just a little bit more on this side. And also I can see my pores more over here than I can over here. It looks a little bit smoother on this side, but I do really like the satin finish that this has. It's not too glowy of a foundation and it's also not matte. It also doesn't make my skin look dry. So hopefully as this kind of sets down a little bit, um, it'll start to look a little bit better. I've also gotten some requests to use powder when I do foundation reviews. Some people like that I don't use powder, other people don't like it. So what I'm gonna do again is just half my face with powder, half my face without, and then we'll see the differences in how it wears. And I'm gonna be using the Moira Set and Correct Powder, which is my favorite powder. This is one of the only powders I've tried that doesn't make my skin look drier. It's almost invisible for a powder, but yet it still has that sort of pore smoothing benefit and it helps to mattify the skin without making it look cakey. So yeah, I'm already seeing a huge difference in how the foundation looks on the powdered side now and without. So I will zoom you guys in so you can see. Let me just put a little bit on my forehead. Okay, so over on this side, the powder made my cheek look really smooth. All of the texture is kind of airbrushed away. And then over here on this side, I'm seeing a lot more of my pores, fine lines. I mean, it just doesn't look as smooth. So I actually really like the way my face looks on this side with the powder, but I feel like the side without just looks a little bit more makeup-y. It also has a little bit of a glow, whereas this side now looks completely matte. So anyway, I'm gonna be doing a wear test, so we'll see how this looks by the end of the night. Next up, I have this blush and bronzer stick from Stila. So this is called the Blush and Bronze Hydra Blur Cheek Duo, and I have mine in the shade Grapefruit and Caramel. I believe this was the lightest shade, and this has a bronzer on one end and a blush on the other, and I haven't tried anything from Stila in a long time, but I absolutely love their convertible color cream blushes, and these are supposed to blur your skin, they have a powder finish, they seem super effortless to blend. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the bronzer, and this is definitely a warmer color, but it seems to have almost a reddish undertone, which I do like. So I'm just gonna put this right along my cheekbone, and I'm gonna blend it with the BK Beauty 107 brush. And yeah, this takes about two seconds to blend. That was super easy. There's no harsh edges and it doesn't look patchy. I do like the color. I think it kind of gives my face a little bit of warmth, but it's not overly orangey. I'm just gonna put a little bit up on my forehead and then a little bit down along my chin. So basically I'm just kind of making the number three on the side of my face. And if you don't wanna draw this directly on your face, you can always just take your brush and just pick up the product from the tube like this and then just apply it that way. That's super easy. It's actually easier. And I'm just really loving how easily this blends on the skin. It's beautiful. 
I feel like it would be awesome for a beginner. I mean, it even blended nicely on top of the powder that I have as well, even though it's a cream product. So it doesn't have that sticky feel and it's not gonna like lift up any base products that you have put down. All right, then I'm just gonna add a little bit of the blush to my cheek. This is such a beautiful warm pink. To me, it kind of looks like a pale coral, which is rare. I feel like coral shades are usually bright and bold. And for those of us who have really light skin tones, sometimes they're a little bit intimidating, but this has that beautiful punchy coral undertone that I think is gonna be so pretty heading into the spring and summer, but it's not intimidating at all. Like I just built up two layers, but if you are not somebody who likes to layer up the blush, you could just do one layer and have a really subtle type of a look. I really, really like this. I'm just gonna put some over here. I'm really loving how buildable this is. It's a nice change of pace because it seems like a lot of the cream blushes that are coming out these days are just super pigmented, especially the liquid ones, like the new Juvia's Place, the Rare Beauty, the new e.l.f. blushes, and sometimes it can be hard to not go overboard with them. I always feel like I have to be really careful, but with this one, I love that I can just like load it on and it's not gonna be overdone or give me crazy clown cheeks. It's just super soft and natural looking. So I love this so far. All right, moving on to eyes. I do have a PR package that I got from Kaja. They're a Korean beauty brand. They're sold at Sephora. And these are their new Wink Dazzle eyeshadow and glitter multi sticks. So these looked super unique and interesting. I really haven't seen anything else like this on the market. I mean, maybe in K-beauty, something like this is popular, but as far as like mainstream American brands go, I haven't seen anything like this. So they're a traditional eyeshadow stick, which we have tons of, but on the other end of the shadow stick is a little sponge tip applicator that's dipped in glitter powder. So you can apply the shadow stick first and then just add a little bit of glitter as either a highlight, like an inner corner highlight, or you can use it all over your lid. I mean, I feel like these look like they're gonna be really versatile. And when it comes to the eyeshadow stick, the first three shades have a shimmer finish. And then the last three shades that you're looking at have more of a matte finish. So these look really, really cute. I'm excited to play with them. And I think today I wanna use the shade Mauve Mirage. This one just looks so cool toned. I feel like it'll kind of go with my outfit a little bit more. And this is one of the matte finish eyeshadows. So I'm just gonna, I guess, put this all over my lid and then just quickly blend it with a brush. Whoa, this is creamy. I hardly even have to touch it to my skin. Sometimes eyeshadow sticks, I feel like they're kind of dragging and pulling at your eyelid. With this, I'm just kind of tapping it onto my skin and it's coming off. That is amazing. I just hope it doesn't crease because sometimes these really emollient cream eyeshadows end up settling into my crease because they're just a little bit too emollient. Um, so the brush that I'm using to blend this is the Profusion Pointed Crease Eyeshadow. It's a little bit of a firmer crease brush, which I think will work really well for a cream formula versus powder. It's a little bit of a denser brush, but this is blending out beautifully. And this color is just a gorgeous soft shade on my skin tone. I love it. The only thing is I'm not sure if this really dusty cool tone pink necessarily pairs well with this warmer cheek that I have going on. But like I said, I'm not going anywhere today. The snow is really coming down out there. So the whole point of this video is really just to play with new makeup. It doesn't matter what the end result comes out like. All right, so now I'm gonna use the other side with the glitter stamp. And basically this has like a spring loaded sort of a mechanism in here that you just dip the sponge tip applicator into the glitter. And I guess I'm just gonna start at the inner corner and just stamp this right on my lid. And I'm just going over that dusty mauve that I put down. This is a really fine glitter. It has a little bit of a duochrome finish, but it's not adding color. I think it's supposed to just add like a little wash of sparkle to your lids, but not necessarily make too much of an impact. It's really sheer. So here's what it looks like up close. And I do have to go back into the container several times just to pick up more product because there's really not a lot of product on the sponge. So yeah, here's one eye done versus the other. Like I said, it's not gonna make like a huge impact. So if you're somebody who likes more of a heavy glitter look, this is not gonna really do that for you. But when it comes to K-Beauty eyeshadow, I find that they're normally not as pigmented as Western eyeshadows. They usually favor more of like a very subtle eyeshadow look. So that's basically what you're gonna get with this. I would say the only exception is if you're using one of the shimmer eyeshadow sticks, then you're gonna get a little bit more impact. For example, this is the shade Champagne Sequin. So you can see the crayon itself 
is already shiny. And then when you put the glitter side on top of that, it's gonna make even more of an impact. I happen to use one of the matte ones. So with the glitter on top, it just ends up looking a little bit more subtle. But if you want more of that pop, then I would definitely check out the shimmery versions. All right, and then for mascara, I'm just gonna use the new e.l.f. Lash Extender Tubing Mascara. I don't have another new one to share, but I've been using this now for probably a month to a month and a half, and I really still love it. It's really just been my go-to formula lately. I love how easily it rinses off with water, no smudges under my eyes, it's great. All right, so eyes are done. I feel like this was such a simple, easy look to create. Those eyeshadow sticks blended like a dream and then just adding a little bit of glitter just adds a little bit of something so it's not like a flat matte eye, but it also just looks really soft and really pretty. So moving on, I have three new lip products that I wanna test out and I wanna try on all of the colors so that you can see them on my lips versus just arm swatches. And all three formulas are really simple similar, so I feel like this will be a good kind of head-to-head -head comparison. The first one that I have are these new tinted plumping balms from Juvia's Place. I also have the new tinted plumping balms from e.l.f., and Doll 10 also just came out with one as well. So I figured we could get the drugstore version. This one's like kind of in the middle. The Doll 10 are probably the most expensive out of the three, and we'll just see which one is the best. So let's start with the Juvia's Place first because I only have two colors of this one. So these are called the Volumizing Gloss Stick, and these are supposed to have a non-sticky, lightweight formula that provides a gorgeous, shiny look and all-day hydration. It has botanical oils and shea butter infused with rich pigment to to give high shine and nourishment to the lips. And they're also supposed to give your lips a little bit of a plumping effect. So first I'm gonna try the shade Soft Life, which is a nude. And these do have a fragrance to me. It actually smells like chocolate. Ooh, I love that. They also give your lips a ton of shine. They are super pigmented, and I am starting to feel that little bit of a tingle going on. It's nothing painful. It's just a little bit, like it's doing something, but it definitely doesn't burn. It almost feels like a cooling type of a feel. So anyway, this shade is Soft Life. And then the other one I got is Black Cherry. Whoa, look at how pigmented this is for a lip balm. I really was not expecting this to be such a dark color. I saw this in the tube and it made me think of like Clinique's Black Honey or the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip in Honeysuckle. Those also look kind of like a black and purple in the tube, but they're so much more sheer. This is actually like the color looks like it does in the tube. So here's Black Cherry. I don't know if this is one that I'm gonna wear very often because I usually favor lighter lip colors, but it is a really pretty cooler tone shade. All right, so those were $15. Let's move on to the Doll 10 Peptide Plump Lip Oil. So these are $24, definitely a bit more expensive. And these claim to be a hydrating, plumping, and smoothing lip treatment that offers a creamy application, sheer effortless color with dazzling shine and intense hydration. And these also contain peptides to help keep your lips were plumped and they come in that click pen style applicator very similar to the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. So this is the first shade and it's called Juicy Nude and they're a little bit melty but I don't find them to be quite as melty and quite as goopy as the Tarte ones. They have a little bit more of that tackiness that helps them grip to your lips a little bit better. I know the Tarte ones just seem like they're very like they slide around a lot. This one has almost a slightly sticky feel but I think that's gonna help them to grip to your lips a lot better. So anyway, this shade is Juicy Nude. I really love this color and these don't have any kind of tingling or burning to them, so that's good. All right, the next shade is Juicy Cherry. This one is a sheer coral and I feel like it goes really nicely with this Stila blush. All right, last shade is Juicy Mauve. I don't know if I would necessarily call this shade mauve, but it is a beautiful rosy color, so I really like this one too. So just my first impression between the two so far, I like the Doll 10 ones a little bit better. I felt like the Juvia's Place, even though they didn't burn, the tingle was a little bit intense and I wasn't crazy about how pigmented they were only because when I'm reaching for a product like this, I usually want something a little more sheer. And I think if you, know, you have a formula that's gonna be sliding around, you definitely don't want a lot of pigment because it's gonna end up on your teeth, it's gonna end up above your lip line. It's just, for me, a little 
little bit more comfortable if a formula like this is on the sheer side. That way I don't feel like I'm worried about it constantly migrating everywhere. The closest thing that I can compare the Doll 10 ones to is the Honey Melting Lip from Nature Republic. And I just talked about these in my last video where I was talking about underrated makeup. These are a K-Beauty brand and I feel like these are very, very similar. They have that same kind of stickier feel that really hugs your lips and they're really nourishing. I mean, they feel amazing. And I feel like they make my lips look really smooth. They kind of get rid of all of those lip lines and fill them in. And I also love that they have the peptides in the formula because that's gonna help to kind of plump up your lips over time. So, so far, Doll 10 is definitely the winner. Let's try the ones from e.l.f. These are called the Pout Clout Lip Plumping Pen. I bought all the colors on the e.l.f. website and these claim to be a three-in-one lip plumper, gloss, and balm. These are $8 out. No, this is doing the same thing. Look at this, especially my bottom lip. Instead of smoothing out my lip lines, it's actually like settling into them. Each, so definitely the most affordable option. They come in eight shades. I didn't get the clear one, but I got all the rest of the colors. So I have seven all together. And these are supposed to be a tinted moisturizing lip plumping gloss with a cooling sensation that gives you smooth, glossy, plumped up pout. And they're supposed to drench your lips in sheer color and a glossy shine. These also have the non-retractable click pen style applicator. Very similar to the ones from Tarte. So the first shade is just peachy. Ugh, this is kind of like concealer lips. Not a fan of this shade right off the bat. These actually have a coconut scent just like the Tarte ones. So I mean, they are really, really trying to dupe those, but I'm actually not loving how this is looking on my lips. Let me just show you up close. It looks kind of patchy and weird and it's clinging to my lip lines in like a really strange way. Like, I don't know if you can see, it almost looks like it's separating on my lips. I'm really hoping it was just that color because it was so light and maybe like I was saying before about too light foundation, sometimes really light colors just exaggerate everything. All right, so this next one is pinky. This is bizarre. I've actually never seen a lip product do this before. All right, this next shade is Toasted. Yeah, they're all doing the same thing and the texture of these is very thick. So like when I press my lips together, I feel like it kind of makes these weird little strings of lip gloss coming from like the top lip to the bottom. Like when I press my lips together, you can see like these weird strings of like chunky lip product like hanging down. All right, I'm just gonna run through the other colors really quickly, but I can already tell you, I don't recommend this formula at all. So this one is Bust a Mauve. I actually really like this color a lot. All right, then this shade is Plum on Over. Next up is Wicked Cherry. And then the last one is Red My Mind. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put one of the Doll 10 ones back on. This is the shade Juicy Cherry. Um, and yeah, in comparison, this one feels so much nicer. It looks smooth and even on my lips. It's not patchy. I just think, you know, I like a lot of Elf's products, but this one is not it. And I rarely dislike a product so quickly, but I'm sitting here kind of wondering how that one even got through like the testing and how a moisturizing formula like that can actually make my lips look dry and more lined. I have no idea, but somehow they accomplished it. So anyway, guys, I am gonna head downstairs. I'm gonna check on my little guy, see how he's doing with his invitation and I figured I'll come back later on this evening. I might just film myself really quickly in like natural lighting around maybe four o'clock and we'll see how the foundation and everything is holding up. But I'll see you guys back here later on tonight with my final thoughts. Hey guys, I'm back for my final check-in and it's been about, wait, when did I start? It's about 8 p.m. I started around 11, so like nine hours. And I just wanna share my thoughts on all of these products and how they're wearing. So let's start with the foundation. I think it's actually a pretty 
long wearing formula. So I'll show you quickly my check-in, which was around four o'clock. And I felt like the side with the powder looked a little bit better to me than the side without the powder. I just thought it looked a little smoother. It looked more poreless, especially when it comes to my forehead. I think my forehead lines were less pronounced on the side with the powder. It just looks smoother overall, but I don't think that the side without the powder looked bad either. It looks relatively smooth on my skin. It's not clinging to dry areas, but at the same time, it does look a little bit makeup-y, so it's not quite as natural looking of a foundation as I generally prefer, but it's not bad. And then looking in the mirror tonight, I think the powdered side actually looks very similar to the unpowdered side at this point. It doesn't look as matte anymore over here. I'm starting to see a little bit of glow coming back through. I'm noticing that a little bit of texture as well. It doesn't look quite as airbrushed as it did earlier today, but I think it looks pretty good for nine hours in. I think it's holding up really well. It hasn't broken apart. It faded a little bit on my nose, but not too badly. Overall, I'm not hating it. And I think this might look really beautiful over a pore smoothing primer. So I'm gonna try that next. I really do like the weightless feel of this, the coverage. Like I said, I'm not completely hating it. I do like the finish. So I guess I'll just have to let you guys know in a future update video what my thoughts are. And then when it comes to the Stila blush and bronzer stick, I do think that it faded a little bit. I can still see the blush. I think the bronzer is still there, but it's kind of hard to tell. It's not as vibrant as it was when I first put it on. So I wouldn't call this an extremely long wearing product. The few times I did look in the mirror throughout the day, I felt like it held up pretty Pretty well. I do like that it's an all-in-one type of product. You can get something similar at the drugstore from NYX. They have the contour and highlight duo sticks and then they have their blush sticks, but they don't have the blush and bronzer in the same packaging. So I kind of like that aspect of this. That way you don't have to buy two products. By the time you buy both of the NYX ones, it's gonna cost you about the same amount as this anyway. So I do like this as a product. I think it's really travel friendly and just great for those quick and easy kind of casual makeup days. And then when it comes to the Kaja eyeshadows, I'm really impressed with the longevity of these. The matte shadow that I put on first was so creamy. I was half expecting it to crease on me in about an hour, but it still looks perfect. There's no creasing whatsoever. It really did set down and it held on beautifully. Also the glitter that's on top hasn't made its way down onto my face at all. It really stuck to my lid and it's not like I used glitter glue. It really just stuck to the eyeshadow base and I see absolutely no glitter anywhere else just on my eyelid. So that is very impressive. My only like tiny complaint about it is that the glitter was hard to pick up on the sponge. I felt like I had to keep going back in a million times to get more product. So it really is supposed to be just for a very subtle wash of color. If you want more of an impact, like I mentioned, just use one of the eyeshadow sticks that already has the shimmer in it. And then you can top it with a little bit of glitter and it'll just be a little bit more impactful than what I'm showing here. But like I said, I'm super impressed with the wear time. And I think these are a fun and unique product that I haven't really seen anywhere else yet. So I thumbs up for these. I think they're really nice. And then when it comes to the lip products, you all know how I felt about the elf ones already. So I'm just saying those are a major fail right off the bat. I do not like them. I thought they made my lips look terrible. When I rubbed my lips together, they almost felt gritty. It was like the product was kind of balling up. I don't know what the deal is with those, but I definitely don't recommend them. And then um, when it comes to the Juvia's Place melting bombs, I felt like these were okay. They weren't terrible. This one definitely threw me for a loop. It was way more pigmented than I was expecting. I did like the nude color a little bit more. I love the chocolatey scent that they have. That's a really nice feature of these. Um, I know it's not gonna be for everybody, but I am somebody who, uh, I love chocolate, so that's a plus. And also, um, you know, they do have that little bit of a tingle. So I prefer if my lip products don't have that, but at least it wasn't uncomfortable. It wasn't a stinging or burning sensation. So these are okay. They're not my absolute favorite, favorite lip product, but what I'm really loving are the Doll 10 Peptide Plumps. I'm wearing the lightest shade right now, which again was called Juicy Nude. And these are just incredibly hydrating. They make my lips look smoother. There's no tingle or any kind of 
plumping sensation with these at all. They do have peptides in the formula, so they're supposed to help plump your lips over time, but they're just so smoothing and they come in the most beautiful colors. So these were definitely a hit, probably one of the biggest hits of the video today. I think these and the Kaja eyeshadows were thumbs up. And also I did like the Stila product as well. So anyway, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of these products down below. If you've tried any of them, let us know what your thoughts were, especially if your skin type is different than mine. If you're oily or combo, I'd love to hear how these wore on you. And also I wanna thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I appreciate it so much. And if you have some extra time and you'd like to check out another video of mine, I'll just put something right up here and you can check that out next. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in my next one. Take care, guys. Bye.